Hello, welcome. Just before the video starts, just a quick apology for how long it is. I'm obviously adding to that by just doing this, but hey, that's the way it rolls. Um, had quite a bit going on, as you'll see. Um, yeah, so hopefully I've got somewhere. And uh, as again, just sorry, it's a bit long. I think it's well over 20 minutes, but anyway. Now onto the video. Oh, don't forget, if you for the 1,000 subscriber giveaway, it's on the previous video, um, favourite koi, that's all you need to do, like and subscribe to the channel, and you'll be interested to the draw next Saturday, or finishes next Saturday, to win the koi plaque and the koi towel. Anyway, catch you later, enjoy what's happened. Cheers. I'm a little peeved off right now. So, as normal, fed the fish, not yesterday, the day before, well, I feed them every day, obviously. And the other day, feed the fish, just having a bit of a look at them. That smaller kahaku, the little one there, has got some red on the underside of its peck. So I'm gonna have a bit of a better look at that. And the side of that one, Looks like a huge blister. Look at it. So, I'm going to have to have another look at that. So, there's still something going on it. So, I thought I was through it all, but clearly I'm not. There's still something wrong with something somewhere within the pond system. So, I'm going to scrape a quick couple of fish, have a look at the smaller kaku and the big kaku, and I'm going to get inside the filter bay and I'm gonna just have a look in I'm gonna have a good look inside the drum I'm gonna have a look inside the K1 vortex see if there's anything amiss I don't know anything dead animals in there or I don't know but there's still something wrong with something somewhere for the fish to just to be getting red marks on them so a bit disappointed um, to say the least So yeah, I, I don't really know. Well, as I say, do a couple of scrapes and some water checks, and um, sort of take it from there really, which is crazy. Unbelievable, shall we say. Um, I was over the back of the pond the other day, just planting some stuff and doing a bit of weeding, and I had a quick look in the top tier of the shower, that's completely fine, it's just normal clear clean media, just with the hint of brown, biofilmy kind of colour on it, so it's definitely not the shower, but there is something somewhere causing this bacterial issues, or for the fish not to be healing as quickly and just to be getting the mark on them, so I just need to find out what and where it is really. So the intention was at some point this year to start adding a few fish back in, but I don't want to do that until I'm confident that the pond system is working as well as it should and how it should and fish, if they do get a slight knock, can just sort of heal themselves without intervention, um, which isn't happening at the minute. Anyway, so yeah, probably disappointed, but hey ho, I've got to try and deal with it, haven't I? So get my gear together and then um, take it from there and then see. In some ways, when I'm scraping the fish, I'm hoping to find something because that could be the root cause of some issues. But when I scraped them a few weeks back, not a single thing. So <sighs> here we go again. So I said about having some carnage work going on in the garden. So some of you may remember, if you've been here a while, I used to have I used to back onto a field here. Um, just to walk the dog around it, just a, just a field, you know, I don't know how many acres, five or six acres. Well now, it's a housing estate. And I used to have a big hedge here, 
So this hedge down there went all the way to the back of the garden. What's happened now is um, we've taken the hedge out because they're eventually they're going to put a fence up from the building site here. So I've gained all of this garden. So this bit here weren't too bad, but up here we it's just been at utter carnage. We had a rotten crab apple tree which we've chopped down, which was in there. This is the remnants of the hedge. We can't get it out yet because I've got a fence in there. And then up here, we've got a plum and a cherry tree there which we're potentially going to try and move. And then rhododendron which is half dead which we've hacked back and all of this space here. So to get the mini digger in, or the builder is, it's going to get the rid of the rest of all of this junk and then we'll have a fence hopefully like this all the way down the other end and we'd have gained a nice bit of garden. But obviously there's a lot of work involved in getting rid of a hedge and trees and levelling the ground. I think the builder said that this part up there where we just walked along they've put 30 tonnes of soil in so far just to try and get the levels right. There used to be a dike one along here and um, the gardens were falling into it so they've, they've obviously filled that in and then um, levelled us up with the new site, estate, whatever you want to call it now. So that's the, that's the headache I've been having out here. Hard work. I've just had a quick look at the scrape under the microscope. Nothing, as per usual. It's definitely bacterial. I'll, I'll turn the fish over now. It's in the bowl there. I've just noticed as well it's peck fin. It's a little bit red. But I see this here, look. That is not good. And I'm sure that wasn't there a while back. Right, a couple of weeks back or whenever I had it last out. So not good at all. So I'm going to give it an injection. But there's something going on. For a fish just to get a horrible, yucky infection like that, there is some kind of bacterial issue somewhere within my pond system. And this tail here, look. In fact, I think this was the one I looked at a while back and said about the pox on it. So, absolute joys. Mm, right, anyway, well, we'll give it a jab and we'll get it back in. There's not a lot I can do with that, just put a bit of the old antibacterial stuff on it, give it a jab and get it back in. Oh, dear me! So, half sort of empty, well, not half, the drum's nearly empty with water, that's as much as I can get out or leaving the pump on. This is the way you shoot, and this is the clean side of the drum. I don't know how much this is going to pick up. So there's nothing of any concern in the clean side. This is the dirty side, just the normal build-up of gritty bits and a million koi teeth. I'll show you them in a minute. So I did find on this edge going into the drum of the chute absolutely clogged up with some right this it absolutely stinks god knows what it is oh it absolutely rotten so obviously i've taken i scraped that off Lob that over there um a couple of snails i don't know if they're still in there no just the shells a bit of concrete and then your koi teeth. 
Um, so other than that horrible, stinky, mucky, yucky stuff, there's not that I can see. I'm going to chuck the GoPro in there, upside down, and have a have a look in. But other than that, there's nothing untoward within the drum. Obviously because the water's nearly out here, when I turn the drain back on, obviously it'll all come gushing back through and hopefully if there is anything in the drain it'll bring that right through anyway. There shouldn't be, but just if there is. Next thing, I'm just going to, let me carry on in there. I don't know I'm doing that. I'm going to have a look have a look in there just see if anything's falling in because I've only got these slatty things on the top but you never know if anything's falling in like a bird or a mouse or anything should be clear because it's again it's after the drum so everything's getting filtered but we'll get that side and have a look in a minute so I don't know whether it's good or bad that I found that horrible stinky stuff stuck to the chute and whether or not it was, I mean it shouldn't be there and it was disgusting, it stinks so it's obviously bad, um, whether or not that's the cause of my problems, I don't know, um, just hope there's no more stuff in there, I don't really want to have to take the drum apart, you can take the, sh the waste chute out, there's four or five bolts here and slide the whole thing out and then you get a better look through there but I don't think I've got any sealant to seal it back up. Um, no, I'm sure I haven't. Anyway, so I'll put this bit back together and then have a look in the empty some of the K1 and have a look in it. I'll just put my hand in and have a rummage down the bottom. But again, should be clear, but you never know. Anyway, koi tips, always fascinating. Look at them. Anyway. A few minutes later if you're going to have to pick that up, but completely clear, you can see the little drain in the bottom there, look, nothing in here whatsoever, what, a couple of bits of holly from the bush that's behind, and the standard snail shell, so that's good, none of it's clogged up and messy, look, don't smell, got a tight, tint, slight tinge of brown on it now, which I presume, been in here a year and a half so it's a decent amount of good bacteria on it now so I'll just get it all back now easier putting it back though I'll just pour it in right well that's another thing ruled out they're all back and bubbling away So there's a bit of air in the pipe work, which has turned it back on. It's funny how inquisitive they are, they're coming over to see what's going on. So after playing back the bit of footage where I chucked the GoPro in the drum just to have a look on the tray, um, there was a ton of stuff at the back which I couldn't reach, so I am going to try and get it all out, but I'm not going to undo the actual tray with the bolts. I've just taken the waste off and hopefully I can get my hand in from this end and scrape it out because I don't even know if that's picking up, it's quite dark there. But it's horrible. I just picked a bit out here. It stinks. 
don't know what it is, a build up of old food. It's, it's just horrid, absolutely disgusting. And as I say, I can't say it, it stinks. So I'm gonna try and get as much out, or all of it, if I can, from here. So I've just taken my jumper off. I'm gonna be sticking my arm up the proverbial to try and, uh, try and get it out, because it shouldn't be there. It's worse, the side, the spray bars on for some reason. Obviously, maybe the, it's getting jetted off, isn't it? On, and just getting stuck on that side, because that's where the spray bar is, so. Anyway, so I'm gonna stick my arm up there and try and get it all out. I don't wanna have to take this off, but, I can't remember if I, I've had it off before. I can't remember whether I did seal it or not. Here it goes, wish me luck. Got it. I've taken it off. Uh, in my head, I've got it that the stuff that's here, when I bolt it all back, it will seal anyway. I'll just make sure there's none of this on it. So this is this is what I got. Look at that. Again, absolutely. That's part of the polycarb roof. Just look at all this stuff on the back here. rotten mess so that is not good so whether or not that is giving me all these issues I don't know but I can tell you this it stinks to high heaven so let's get this cleaned up and get back in get it back in and then I can get the drum back on see if it's leaking if it's leaking I'll have to make an emergency trip out But finally, hopefully, this is causing any issues. There we go, back in. No leaks. All nice and dry. I just probably tightened it down a little bit harder than it was before. So, obviously the drum's going to go nuts now because all the junk that sort of come off is now stuck to the... Underside just goes to show if you've got a if you've got a drum field, it still does need some maintenance, doesn't it? Really, I mean, I have had this apart once before, uh, last year, year before. I don't know when the um, the rubber seal failed on the inside. So Mike at Quinny Coy kindly sent me another one, and I had to replace that. <coughs> so I have seen it. Uh, it has been cleaned out before, but that was, as I say, eighteen months, two years ago, maybe. I haven't actually ever looked. Uh, inside the waste tray before, so but fingers crossed. That's the end to the. That's the end to the bacterial stuff. So I just obviously need to try and um, fix the fish that I've got, and then hopefully that will be the end of it. That. Looking at what I found, I like to think that is the cause of all my problems. But we'll see. Um, obviously, I've got two fish of concern in there, which I need to try and get sorted. And then, um, obviously if it doesn't, then I still do have other crazy issues, but we'll see. Right, I'm fed up standing in there, and I want to go and have some lunch. It's probably way past my lunch time. I'm going to get all this back together, go inside, have something to eat, and, um, yep, catch you later. Reasonably quick. We'll just see what comes out. This is what this one looks like. Look at that. Horrible. So I'm not going to do a lot with it. I'm going to try and ease some of this pus out and then give it a bit of a jab and then get her back in. No, 
else looking right? There's still a little bit of skin missing there, but so take this sorted and get it back. It's just all fluid under the under the skin. So just gonna try and ease some of that out gently. There you go. It's not red and horrible, it's just pussy. So gently does it. I think I need the other hand for this. Right, put this down. I did say I was going for some lunch a second ago, which I'm not because I'm doing this. But we'll be in a minute. I'm starving! Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this week's video and catch you next week. Bye.